Day 7 of our tour of the Florida Nature Coast brings us to Dunedin, Florida, a quaint yet vibrant town located just west of Tampa on Florida's Gulf Coast. With its rich Scottish history, booming dining and brewery scene, and miles of waterfront parks and nature trails, Dunedin offers enough for its visitors to explore for days. But if you're like us and have just one day in Dunedin, you may have no idea where to begin. So come along with us as we spend one Saturday exploring Dunedin. We'll check out the downtown market, along with some of the best spots for coffee, food, adventure, and relaxation. And be sure to stick around to the end to see where we ended our day with yet another beautiful Gulf sunset. Our day in Dunedin actually started off at our hotel in Tarpon Springs, where we would be staying for the final two nights of our week-long Florida road trip. Morning guys, today we're in Tarpon Springs. This is our first time staying here, and I hear there's an excellent donut shop nearby, so that's why I'm up early. Good morning. Are you up for some donuts too? away from this place and we'll be here for a few days so there's a good chance we're gonna go back it's finally donut time a lemon jelly filled donut oh nice I got the donut of the day which was birthday cake After a delicious start to the day, we made the 20 minute drive south to Dunedin, where our first stop would be coffee. We were happy to find that Dunedin had a wealth of highly rated coffee shops to choose from, but we could only pick one, which led us to the Sandpiper. was excellent and gave us the boost we needed for the walk to our next stop, the downtown market. The Dunedin Downtown Market takes place from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Pioneer Park every Friday and Saturday from November through May. Here, visitors will find local vendors selling a variety of art, fresh produce, and ready-to-eat lunch items. After taking a few minutes to check out all of the vendors, we were hot and ready for a cold, refreshing drink. And we found exactly that at Munchie's Kettle Corn Stand, where they were serving up fresh Florida limeade. We enjoyed the drink along with some live music while cooling off in the shade. Next, it was time to find a snack. And while our plan had been to buy some healthy and delicious fruit from this produce stand, we got pulled into the Glen Family Bakery stand where my sweet tooth once again won out. We could not pass this up. After devouring the delicious sweet treat, it was time to move on to a new adventure, but not before making one last walk through the market to try out a few samples. From the fresh lemon, and then I added some beetroot powder to this, so it's got okay. Okay. Skylar's favorite was a drink made with beetroot powder and lemon juice from the organic wheatgrass farm direct stand. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 
You like that one better? Yeah. Cool. And mine was the root jam from Frivolous Fruit Products. It has beets and parsnips and sweet potato and wow. fresh ginger. Wait till she sees this. Hey. Wow, huh? That's really good. Yeah. We just got done walking around the downtown Dunedin Market. We saw some familiar stands from the St. Pete Saturday Market, but we also saw a lot of new ones. And there was also a dessert that we just couldn't pass up. She couldn't pass up. <laughs> so now we're going to find something a little more active to do. When you're ready to escape the crowds to a more relaxing environment, Dunedin has you covered there as well. We briefly scoped out the Pinellas Trail, which is 45 miles in length and runs all the way to downtown St. Pete. And just a few blocks to the southwest of downtown, you can find a scenic waterfront trail that runs along the St. Joseph Sound. We enjoyed taking in the sights along the trail and the cool breeze blowing off the water. We discovered that the waterfront trail runs all the way into northern Clearwater, and we soon found that we had reached the Dunedin-Clearwater border. Here we decided to turn back to make the mile-long walk back to downtown from where we would be driving to our next destination. But once back downtown, you may want to take a minute to pop into some local shops. And this beach and mermaid themed shop was easily my favorite. We found no shortage of sights to see out on the streets either, including what was easily the coolest golf cart we'd ever seen. After briefly checking out the Pinellas Trail and also the Bayfront Park, we decided to come here to Hammock Park. And I'm glad that we did. It ended up being a little bit bigger than I expected. There are a lot of options for trails. We're right here and I think we're going to start on the Osprey Loop and head towards the Observation Tower. We were immediately impressed with the wide, well-maintained trails at this park and later found that the 6-foot wide, 1,300 feet boardwalk is nearly brand new, having just recently been completed in December of 2020. We made it to the Observation Tower and while the tower is definitely a little bit shorter than what we expected, it's still a nice place to hang out in the shade. We're going to explore the park a little bit more before we find some dinner. We're really enjoying the nice wide boardwalk paths in this park and there do appear to be some nice wide gravel paths as well but they're a little closer to the plants and the weeds and as much as we got bit up in Wikiwachi a couple days ago we are not wanting to mess around with bugs so we're happy to stick to the boardwalk today. It looks like there is a place to launch paddleboards and kayaks to go through the mangroves. We found another map of the park that identifies all the trails. And you could really spend all day walking around out here if you wanted to. We only did the little trail up here. After another enjoyable hike, we were both ready for some drinks and we had just the spot in mind. Our affinity for waterfront drinks led us to the High and Dry Grill, a tiki bar located just off the Dunedin Causeway. It's like a squid, right? Yeah. Since we were already in North Dunedin at the park, and because we're kind of suckers for tiki bars on the water, we decided to drive out to the Causeway to check out High and Dry and have a couple of drinks. We really do like this location because behind me, you can see Honeymoon Island, which in the future we might make a video on visiting that area. 
but to the right of me is Caladesi Island. And a few months ago, we walked from Clearwater Beach to Caladesi. We'll make sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. We were happy to find an open table with a view, and we wasted no time ordering a sangria and a cocorita. The tropical drinks arrived in no time and were a great way to relax and cool down after an afternoon of trail walking. If you're like us and are searching for a tasty, yet healthy dinner, then Fa'iden might be the perfect next stop. Located in downtown Dunedin and right along the Pinellas Trail, Fa'iden serves up fantastic Asian street food out of a little purple house. We just ordered our pho, and Skylar, what did you get for beer? Asahi. One of my favorite Asian beers. So I got the blueberry boba tea, the Fa'iden bowl with beef, and summer rolls with pork belly. It all looks and smells amazing. <laughs> Too good to talk. <laughs> we just left Pho Eden and the Pho and the summer rolls were awesome and the quantities were huge. We actually had planned on going to a second place to get some more food in downtown Dunedin, but we are both stuffed. Luckily we have a good backup plan. We met a local at Pho Eden who had recommended a local townie bar called Bowser's. We don't know anything about this place, but we are excited to check it out. But first, we had to catch sunset, and fortunately for us, Edgewater Park was only a few short blocks away. Our timing couldn't have been much better, as we arrived just as the sky was catching fire. And last but not least, we arrived at Bowser's, the county bar that we knew nearly nothing about. But being a bit of a dive bar fanatic, it didn't take much to convince Skylar to give it a try. Once inside Bowser's, we found cheap and strong mixed drinks and high li beer, the two top requirements of a proper Florida townie bar. And we were pleasantly surprised to find a talented band whose music was a great way to wrap up another fantastic day of our road trip. If you're interested in seeing more of our tour of the nature coast, the Gulf beaches, or other Florida content, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching!